Well, President Trump firing back on Twitter saying, how do you impeach a Republican president for a crime that was committed by the Democrats? Make America great again. Catherine Harris picks up her coverage live in Washington. Catherine, good Monday to you. Well, thank you, Bill, and good morning. In the last few minutes, there's been a court filing uh, over subpoenas for the president's business and other financial records. We are still pouring through this 14-page filing. But it makes the statement that members of Congress are overreaching their bounds of authority. It reads in part, Congressman Cummings, he's head of the Oversight Committee, has ignored the constitutional limits on Congress's power to investigate. Article 1 of the Constitution does not contain an investigations clause or an oversight clause. It gives Congress the power to enact certain legislation. Meantime, the House Judiciary Committee chairman is seeking testimony of former White House counsel John McGahn, and he's important because he's at the center of the obstruction findings in the Mueller report. In mid-2017, he was asked to fire the special counsel, but refused. But McGahn's critics say he was a weak White House counsel, allowing FBI agents to interview former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn without prior notification, which is the standard. He also assured those close to the president his testimony to the special counsel was unremarkable. All of this as the question of impeachment further exposes divisions among Democrats. I think it's certainly the case that an impeachment would be unsuccessful if the Republican Party continues to place a party above country, continues essentially to back the president no matter how unethical or dishonest his conduct may be. And sadly, that's where we are right now. As we continue to pour through the Mueller report, what we find are more headlines. And if you go to the appendix, it contains the president's written answers to the special counsel, and it shows that some 30 times he could not recall the information. His lawyers are making the case that they never considered an in-person interview for the president because they say the special counsel investigators had an agenda. I'd have been disbarred if I let him testify. There were so many indications that they wanted to trap him into perjury because they don't have a case that they were not in good faith. Also this week, a fuller version of the Mueller report is available to lawmakers, but it does not contain grand jury material, which requires a court order. The Attorney General William Barr issued a statement late last week through a spokesperson that reads in part, the Department of Justice has also made arrangements for Chairman Nadler and other congressional leaders to review the report with even fewer redactions. In light of this, Congressman Nadler's subpoena is premature and unnecessary. The department, it says, will continue to work towards what it characterizes as legitimate requests, Bill. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine Harris setting the table for us in Washington.